Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about what I read in April. This past month I read a good amount of books. I read seven books and let's just get right into it. The first book I read this month was a short novella and this is actually part of the Stormlight Archive series and it was Darn Chard by Brandon Sanderson and I read this one a 5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed this novella so much because we're focusing on a disabled person, Brizin, and how she may navigate in a fantasy world. We explore her doubts, her need for independence, and also her care for her fantastical pet. I also love the expansion of some side characters from the main series that doesn't get so much page time in this novella and it was really well done. After reading all the books I have this month, I think I'm prepared to dive into Rhythm of War finally, <laughs> which is book 4 in the Sword of Arca series. Then I finished another novella and this one is Mysteries of the Thorn Manor by Margaret Rogerson. This is a sequel novella following the standalone YA fantasy book Sorcery of Thorns. I ended up reading the novella 4 out of 5 stars. The main novel, Sorcery of Thorns, we're following Elizabeth Scrivener who is in training to become a library warden, which essentially they would be caring for magical remorse. And she finds herself entangled with a young sorcerer and his demonic servant. This novella was really cute and cozy and it has a lot of wintry vibes, so I really do think it would be best to read this in the winter months, but honestly I'm not much for a seasonal reader. It was very easy to dive back into this world with magic mayhem and also a magical house. I would agree with the author that she mentions in her acknowledgement that this novella is more so a extended epilogue to the main novel, which I did absolutely love this novella and also Sorcery of Thorns. So if you're looking for a unique fantasy novel, I would recommend you to check these books out. Next up, I finished a fantasy series, which is always something I'm happy to say. It was Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. This is the third and final book in the Green Bolt Saga series, and I rated this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This trilogy is so explosive with politics, family dynamics, and sacrifice. And here's a quick summary of book one, which is Jade City. Jade City is about two crime syndicates who control the island of Kek Khan. And we follow the family of the Kals who run a clan with green bones among their ranks. These warriors, they wear jade and that's what gives them superhuman abilities. But the Kals and their rivals are at odds with each other and a clan war is on the horizon. And onto what I thought about Jade Legacy, there's no spoilers here. There was a longer timeline to this book and I really enjoyed getting to learn about each character's journey and how each character's story ends. I also like the focus on what it means to actually be a green bone and how exploring the world on your own can bring very valuable lessons. Honestly, it was a very bittersweet conclusion because I absolutely love this world, but it was very satisfying to have everything wrapped up nicely. I picked up a rom-com next and this was Happy Place by Emily Henry and I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. For this one, I do have a full review up and I'll link that down below if you're interested. This romance book, we follow a long-time couple, Harriet and Wynne. And while being on vacation with their closest friends, they decide to pretend to actually still be together when in reality they have been broken up for months. I had an absolute blast reading this book and it was very interesting to see how Harry and Wynne got up to the point of why they broke up in the first place and seeing them struggle to keep up appearances in front of their friends, although their chemistry is still very high and I don't think it's that difficult for them to pretend. I would actually say that Happy Place is now my second favorite Emily Henry book after Beach Read. This is definitely a rom-com book that you don't want to miss out on. Then I read a mystery book and this was The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. This one I rated a 3 out of 5 stars. This book has an interesting and original concept. We're set in a manor in the English countryside and our narrator is jumping from body to body in order to stop a murder from happening. I would describe it as a Groundhog Day scenario where one day is being repeated for our main character. It did feel like I was reading about the board game Clue in novel form and trying to figure out what is going on in this book. 
although there are very strict rules that our narrator has to follow. When I first started to read this book, it was very gripping with being introduced to the murder mystery and all the elements that keep popping up. However, it started to get a little bit confusing because there were many characters being introduced all at once. It was hard to keep up when the narration or the point of view would just skip to another character's point of view or even in the middle of a repeating day. I feel like if the book was in chronological order, that would have helped lessen my confusion from popping up. However, the lead up to the ending was unpredictable but it was also unsatisfying in a way because things were all over the place and jumbled up. So I wanted to love this one but I only liked it. Next, I picked up A Slow Fire Burning by Paula Hawkins and I rated this one a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This thriller follows the aftermath of a murder of a young man on a London houseboat and we have three women that are closely tied to him. First, we have Laura who has a troubled past and who also had a one-night stand with the murder victim. Second, we have Carla and this is the murder victim's aunt and who is also recently grieving the death of her sister. And third, we have a nosy neighbor, Miriam, who really likes to stick her nose into other people's business and she is essentially a people watcher. I was quite gripped at the beginning of this book but then it kind of got into some weird twists and the resolution of the murder mystery was a little bit jarring <laughs> to say the least. I think if it had gone another way, that would have been a better conclusion as for the characters, they're each struggling with their own personal problems and we see how that struggle and personal problems translate into their behaviors and actions for the murder mystery. Each character has their secrets and some are more darker than others. That is linked to that weird conclusion that we got. <laughs> this is my first Paula Hawkins book and I am interested to read her backlist including Girl on the Train and Into the Water and to see how I like those. And the last book that I picked up this month was another Brandon Sanderson book and it is Warbreaker. I did end up reading this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I would say Warbreaker is a vibrant fantasy book that has a unique magical system. In this world, gods rule and magic is very deeply integrated into its society. The basic concept of the magic in this world is that there is something called breath and this is essentially someone's life force or soul and these breaths can be collected by other people and that allows those people to gain magical powers. There are several other rules and layers to the magical system but that's the basic gist of it. Admittedly, I was a bit confused reading about the magical system but by the end of it, you get the hang of it. Onto our characters, we follow two princess sisters, one who is actually set to marry the god king but a last minute decision changes which sister is sent off. Ciri and Vivenna, they are complete opposites and I really liked seeing how they assert themselves in new and unfamiliar situations. I also loved Light Song, who is a reluctant god who questions his divinity, and Vasher, who is a mysterious, lonesome figure with a talking sword. There is a slow buildup of the world, but that really allows the characters to shine through and drive the story forward. And I'm very excited to see the sequel to Warbreaker, which is called Nightblood. I have no idea when that's going to be released, but I am excited for it. Those were all the books I read in April, and I would say my absolute favorites were Jade Legacy and Warbreaker. They were amazing. <laughs> And I really hope you enjoyed watching this video or maybe found a book or two to add to your own TBR. I hope you can give me a huge thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below and also don't forget to ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.